hello, I'm uh, Jerry Sasuski. I'm the Chief Science Officer and Founder of Cyanotech Corporation and Nutrex Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, I began working with microalgae in 1976 when I accepted a teaching job at the University of California at Santa Barbara. Uh, my work was funded through the National Science Foundation as well as university grants. In 78, I became, uh, realized that a product, spirulina, was coming into the human supplement market. Uh, it had a wonderful nutritional profile, but it turned out to be a somewhat dirty product. It was produced near a lake, uh, in a lake near Mexico City, Lake Texacoco, and the spirulina, although wonderful nutritional profile, was dirty. It had high levels of bacteria and, and many times high levels of uh, 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 heavy metals. Yeah. So I thought, okay, here's an opportunity to apply engineering solutions uh, to produce spirulina under very controlled conditions, maintain the wonderful nutritional profile, but produce an absolutely clean product, very low in heavy metals, very low in bacterial count. And so then we started uh, moving ahead, and actually Cyanotech was uh, founded in the Seattle area, mm -hmm. uh, in town Woodenville, mm -hmm. uh, through a merger. <clears throat> Uh, Cyano, uh, actually, it was a company called Altex Technologies mm -hmm. merged with a company called Round Ma well, I'm sorry, White Mountain. Mm -hmm. And the reason we went through this reverse merger is that White Mountain was a public company, but it also had three hundred thousand dollars in the bank. Okay. We merged not to become public, but to get the three hundred thousand. Okay. <laughs> we we did a little bit more fundraising. We then had enough money to uh, put up a, a spirulina production facility. Mm -hmm. uh, we initially thought we were going to grow spirulina in Nevada mm -hmm. because we had access to a low-grade geothermal hot spring which we could use to keep the spirulina warm during the winter. Huh. I actually spent a winter in Nevada in very cold temperatures. Okay. I put in a test pond. We actually grew spirulina in 30 degree uh, Fahrenheit, so it's about zero degrees centigrade, oh, oh, oh. you know, a little lower than that. Was it working? It worked. We grew <coughs> spirulina, but okay. it was difficult. And the place we were um, growing the spirulina was in the middle of nowhere. It was uh, by a town called Round Mountain. It was mm -hmm. a really godforsaken place to, okay. to live. <laughs> um, came back to the Seattle area. Before we made a final decision, I wrote to every warm state in the United States that could probably support spirulina growth in the winter. Mm -hmm. It was almost a joke that I wrote to Hawaii, because okay. there's never a land available in Hawaii you know, yeah. to produce a, a, a large spirulina plant. Mm -hmm. But I did, and uh, Hawaii, the state of Hawaii has a program called Aquaculture Development Program. I think as soon as my letter hit their desk, I got a call from the gentleman there. Okay. <clears throat> he explained to me <clears throat> what the Natural Energy Lab was about, where we're located. and. Uh, it was February in Seattle, so it's very easy to convince yourself to take a business trip to Hawaii in February. From yes, Seattle. it's nice, yeah. <laughs> so, so we came out here uh, at the Natural Energy Lab, uh, looked around, and indeed, it's probably the best place in the world to grow microalgae. Mm -hmm. This area here at the Natural Energy Lab, it's uh, located on the Kona Coast of the Big Island of Hawaii, mm -hmm. a place called Keaholi Point. It's more sunlight than any other coastal location in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's warm 12 months a year, so it can produce 12 months a year. Mm -hmm. It gets very low rainfall, uh, so we can culture in large open ponds. And it has access to a very unique resource, cold deep seawater pumped up from a depth of uh, 2,000 feet. We receive the cold seawater about 10 degrees centigrade. Okay. Initially, we didn't know how we were going to use that unique resource, mm -hmm. but since then, We've developed uh, like a patented drying process that we use in spirulina, ocean chill drying. For cooling? For, yeah, we actually use it to cool and dehumidify warm gases coming out of our dryer ah. so it can recycle those gases back into the dryer. Okay. When we start up the dryer, the dryer is full of air, 20% mm -hmm. uh, oxygen. Yeah. After running about five minutes, the oxygen level drops down to less than 1%. Okay. So it can dry spirulina and protect all the oxygen sensitive nutrients, things like. Mm -hmm. Uh, carotenoids, zeaxanthin, beta carotene, mm -hmm. uh, enzymes, and so forth. Because there is no oxidation. Very low process. oxygen, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our okay. spirulina, when it goes into our ocean chill drying, which is a highly modified spray dryer, mm -hmm. only spends about 12 seconds in the dryer mm -hmm. uh, when it's dried. So it's a very fast process. Matter of fact, once the spirulina leaves a culture pond, it turns into finished spirulina powder 
uh, less than 30 minutes. Okay, this is really great. Right. It's very fast mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. But when you came here the first time, this was just a big lava field, I believe, huh? Oh yeah, it, it was a, a big lava field. Uh, we're, where we're located now is really in the middle of nowhere. Yes, I see. Um, <clears throat> so we started with a, a five acre facility, uh, two hectares. Mm -hmm. um, we had to have uh, crews come in and actually use a combination of blasting and very big bulldozers okay. to flatten the lava yeah. uh, so we could start building it. And that's, that's a disadvantage of the site, is the hard lava. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It actually costs $85,000 an acre just to make the lava flat okay. so you can start working on it. Okay, okay. But we moved ahead with uh, you know five acres. We had uh, four spirulina culture ponds mm -hmm. uh, started producing, and that was in, in 1984. Mm -hmm. So we've been here 34 years. Okay. We've seen a lot of changes. 34 years. So okay. jumping ahead to today, uh, we now have 90 acres, uh, 36 hectares under production. Mm -hmm. We produ pr produce both spirulina, Hawaiian spirulina pacifica, and we produce a natural astaxanthin product called. Mm -hmm. uh, Hawaiian bioastin natural astaxanthin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we're producing those two on, on 90 acres. We have 130 employees uh, working here. Um, our biggest customers mm -hmm. now in the U.S. mainland are uh, Costco. Mm -hmm. We're in about half the Costco stores throughout the U.S. and we're uh, selling quite a bit of uh, material through, through Amazon in the U.S. Okay, so can you produce enough? Because this seems well, to be very big. <laughs> well, you know, we, we, we can produce enough uh, a bioastin, Hawaiian astaxanthin, mm -hmm. but we are having trouble producing enough spirulina. In the moment, yeah. It, mm -hmm. At the moment. And mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're going to, through, through some great links to try and uh, increase our production, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got a lot of people working very hard to, to mm -hmm. in, improve our production, increase mm -hmm. our production so we can supply the demand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had some discussions about this. I mm -hmm. know it's sometimes not so easy. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what is... Um, the reason why I came here, is it the, the sunshine or is it the, the cheap land or what is it that you had to uh, got this, that you wanted to have, uh, have to farm here in Hawaii? Well, the, the most important thing of mm. mass uh, commercial production of microalgae is the light. Is the light. Okay. Is the light. That's absolutely important. Mm -hmm. And of course, this gets more sunlight than any other coastal location in the United States. So that was number one. Mm -hmm. Number two was the warm temperature. Mm -hmm. So we, we actually, without any heating or cooling, could grow spirulina 12 months a year. Ah, okay. So that, that mm -hmm. those two things are very important. Mm -hmm. Low rainfall is important, so it could grow in, in large open ponds. Mm -hmm. So those th th three things really clinched the deal why we wanted to come to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. We really didn't know what to do with the cold seawater, but since then have made some very uh, good uses for it. Mm -hmm. So thank you for this interview. This was mm -hmm. uh, gave us uh, new ideas. Thank you very much, and I wish you a lot of success, even for the production of spirulina, that you can increase it again, okay? We're, we're going to work very hard, uh, yes. Raul, and uh, it's wonderful to see you here in, in Kona, Hawaii, and you're always welcome. Very okay. nice to see you. Thank you very much. Okay.